Hello guys, welcome back. This is the third video in the chain lead series. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through chat with CSV. First video was about intro plus chat with PDF. And the second video was about chat with text file docs plus chat with PDF as well as chat with text file. Now that I covered three videos, I'm going to make this repository public. So what I'm going to do now is follow the step by step instructions here again so that you can follow the same instruction for all the three videos that I have covered until now for Chainlit. Let's get started. Before I start today's video about chat with CSP, some of you asked about the Chroma DV, how to add the embeddings or how to get the embeddings, right? If there is two PDF how to add one PDF at one time and the next PDF embeddings next time, right? How it works in this chat with uh, PDF and chat with the doc is that I'm not storing the embeddings in the disk, right? You can do in memory as well as store the embedding somewhere. There is a uh, good instructions in the Chroma DB website also how you can do that. But if you want me to explain in depth let me know in the comment section i can create a new video just related to the embeddings and how you can store that into the vector stores okay now i have logged in as a different user than sudarshan koirala here if you go here i am logged in as basic data science so i'm going to replicate as if i was a new user right now i landed in this github repo what i do first is if i find it helpful I will first give a star and I recommend you to do this also, which I mentioned in my previous video. So other people also find it helpful. And then next step you can do is fork this particular repository to your GitHub account, right? For that, what you can do is click this fork icon there, and then you can provide different name for your repository also or you can just leave what it is here and just create the fork. I'm going to just follow what it is mentioned here. So now it is going to create a new GitHub repository called Langchain OpenAI Chainlit in my account. That means the new account I am logged in currently. And then it will show here forked from Sudarshan Koirala Langchain OpenAI Chainlit. Now if you make some changes here, it will be just in your account and it will not affect in the main repo. But if you want to provide some modifications, you can provide pull request into this particular main repository so that I can merge those requests if there is some updates needs to be made. I hope that is clear now. The next thing what you can do is if you don't want to follow the GitHub code space, which I'm going to go through now, you can just go here and clone the repository and start following the readme file. That is what I have mentioned here, right? All the different instructions you can read here. You can git clone it and go inside it and then follow all the different steps. But what I'm going to go through here is work in the GitHub code space. For that, you can go to this code icon here. Not in the local, but you need to go to code space. I have seen some of you asking that it does not work in the windows or what is the hardware requirements and so on. But if you follow this code space, then the resources will be provided by GitHub. What I'm running currently will be the same for you. I recommend you to follow this if you are confused if it works in your local machine or not. Now what you can do is just say create code space on main, right? It is going to create some environment in the cloud and all the things will be here and the steps that we need to follow here the first one git clone and cd langchain openai chain lead will be automatically done for us because we are just opening that into the github code space and the thing when the github code space is being spawned up there what i want to mention here is if you have python 3.10 if you work in GitHub code space, you need to follow what I will be going through there. But if you have Python 3.10, then there will be some error for this Chroma, which requires SQLite greater than or equals to 3.35, right? I highly recommend you to 
install Python 3.11, which I will show you now, right? If I go here, the good part of GitHub code space is it detects uh, what Python version is installed and it will try to install all the necessary things for us automatically. We don't need to worry about that. I can make this little bit smaller. We can just follow the readme file from here now, right? We are using OpenAI model and Langchain as framework, chain lead for deploying, right? The system requirements, this is what I just mentioned you. Steps to replicate, all we did until this. This is what we are doing here. We don't need to do this in GitHub code space. And the next thing we need to provide is in the example.env, which is here. We need to re rename that to the .env and provide our OpenAI API keys, right? The OpenAI API keys can be found from this particular URL. So I can click this particular URL. I am already logged in and I already have some secret keys here. I can delete this for now and I can create a new one. I'm going to show you how to create this here because I'm going to revoke this once I create this video. If you don't have the account, first you need to create the account and create a new secret key. I can just give the name here chain lead. You don't even need to give, this is optional. And we can say create secret key. And I can copy this, go back to the GitHub code space. Now everything is done here, right? Let me go and follow the steps. The second step is cp example.env.env, right? When I run this, the example.env here, now it is env and this is still here because we just did the copy, right? Now we don't need to do anything here. If you go here, I'm just saying you to provide the OpenAI API key in this format, right? Now we can go to .env and here you can just replace the API key that we just copied. I can say control yes, it is saved now, right? We did this step, right? And we already also provided the OpenAI API key. So if you have Python 3.11, you can just create the virtual environment using this command. But here, I will just show you that what is the Python version here. It is 3.10.8, right? So I need to create a virtual environment with Python 3.11 and Conda is easiest to do that. But make sure you have Conda first. In GitHub code space, it is already there. So you don't need to worry about it. So there is the Conda. I can just paste the thing that I copied. I can say allow here and enter, right? So it is going to create a, a Conda environment for me and it will activate with this particular command. I can close this. So it is almost done. Once that is done, we need to install the necessary packages now, right? Okay, it went to the readme file. I can just copy this, control C. And it says here, okay, it's activated, right? To know that if it is activated or not, you can see .env in front of the terminal. So that means that the virtual environment is activated. And whatever we install now will be just installed in this particular virtual environment. I can just run pip install dash our requirements.txt. If you go to the requirements.txt, we have all the packages that needs to be installed for this particular repository. Okay, it is going to be installed here. Next thing we can do is follow these commands. Now you can follow the same thing for PDF, for text file, or chat with doc, chat with PDF, and chat with doc and PDF, right? You can follow these things. And in this particular video, we are going to follow CSV. Now let's go and see what is inside CSV QA, right? So if I go here, csvqa.py, let me make this smaller. We don't need to do anything. So here there is the necessary modules that we need to import. And there is these variables, but we don't need to provide here because chain lead automatically grabs the environment variables from .env. That is the good part. And then here we create OpenAI object. And I'm going to use pandas data frame agent from Langchain. If you see here, in order to read the CSV files. Right. So here 
create agent right i am going to create the pandas agent and provide the data provide the large language model right and the other things are almost the same what we just went in our earlier videos we need to have the accept text csv so it just accept the csv file so if you want to upload other files it will not accept it and what we need to do here is just read the csv file and other things are the same and here we create the agent and that's all now we can just save this and let me clear this screen now we can just go here and take the command which is in the readme file where we can run the csv file in order to run the chain lit app right we can copy this command go to the terminal control v and then you can just press enter now it is opening in the local host the app with chain lit right so here is the chain lit app you can refresh this page and we can now upload the csv file as you can see here what we can do now it just click this browse files and now we can just upload the csv file right i can double click this it says processing movie statistics data set csv done you can now ask questions so we can just ask how many columns are there right and then it will provide us the answer that there are 14 columns now you can just go here and ask as many questions as you want we can say list the column names and it will list the column names for us so yeah as you can see here so you can go ahead and ask other questions also but for the demonstration purpose i will just ask these two questions okay that's all for this video about chat with csv and the next what i will cover is chat with csv with docker because if you want to ship something as you see here in the deployment part we are going to deploy the chat with csv but before doing the deployment you need to understand how to containerize that particular csv file right so the next video will be about chat with csv with docker i hope you find the video helpful if you are new around here please subscribe to the channel if you have already subscribed please click the like button and share so that other people also might find it helpful thank you for watching and see you in the next video